we pray that you please speak to every heart today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, Lord God, that you will break these words here this morning to pieces and make it fit into every heart that is here this morning and those watching online in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Let's have our seats briefly. Let's have our seat briefly. I trust God to help me with speed this morning. So I'm going to be very, very fast this morning by the grace of God. If you have something to write, I would like you to write something. Uh, actually, if you look into this that you have, the message of today is actually in this place. But I will still encourage you to write because the delivery of the message is definitely going to be different from whatever is written down. So you may have something that God will be speaking to you or something that will jump out at you. So I encourage you to please write. And if you have been taking this and maybe after church you just dump it, please don't always dump it. There is always a message inside of it. We give this out just once in a month. So I encourage you to always take it home because there is something that can be a blessing to you in it. Praise the Lord. So the title of the message today is Jesus, the only true shepherd, one. Jesus, the only true shepherd, one. So I'm going to be concluding this message next week by the special grace of God. So we are still on our introduction uh, talking about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, by God's grace, I'm hoping that every one of us will know. I think in, in Nigeria or maybe in Africa, in some other places that we came from, you know, in Nigeria, for example, I can say of that, uh, for those people that attended private school, some of us did not attend private school until maybe when there was a particular strike that we now attended private school. And in my days, you can count the number of private school in a particular local government. Very few. And rich men, very rich men, send their kids to, to private school at that time because they were not so much at the time. So I remember that the Lord is my shepherd is always one of the recitations. Praise the Lord. Am I right? The Lord is my shepherd. So some of us that attended public schools then, we couldn't recite it except uh, our Father who art in heaven, Jesus' model of prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, you know, and so on and so forth. But some people that went to private school, they will recite the Lord is my shepherd, and we'll be looking at them at that time like this. But I also thank God I tasted private school. But that was when there was that strike that year. Praise the Lord. But right now, everybody in my country, I call that country God's own country. It is where with that country in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. But right now, even people that are not even wealthy, thank God they're able to send their kids also to private school right now because the public school have just become, you know, a mess. Praise God. I pray that God will help everybody that is still in that country in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, maybe someday God will take everybody out <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe Canada will buy all of us. <laughs> Praise God. So the Lord is my shepherd. David was the one that made this statement. If you looked at that statement very well, that statement is authoritative. That statement is assertive. That statement is, was full of pride. That statement was full of understanding, was full of knowledge. Because David knew how big God is. David knew how marvelous God is. David knew how wonderful God is. David knew how majestic God is. Praise the Lord. And that's why he was able to make that confident statement that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Because David knew and understand who God is. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask us this morning, how many of us, how, how much do you know of God? I know this is a sermon, but I want to do an exercise this morning. I want each and every one of us to say something about God. Now, we can, you can chorus it. Just say something about God. How big do you think God is? I wanted to say something. Yeah, on this line, on that line. Yeah, say something. How big do you think God is? I want to hear you. Very big. Very big. How big is very big? You can't express it. Another person there. Bigger than the biggest. Another person. I think there's a song that they say, bigger than the biggest, wise than the wisest. Something like that. Praise the Lord. Pastor Adeboye, you know, I think maybe he's not the first person, but I think maybe he made it popular. They say wiser than the wisest, bigger, you know, I think they even made that, um, what's it called? Like, uh, like a ringing toe sometime. Hallelujah. There is no word that we can actually use to express God. I want us to look at these two scriptures. 
quickly we're going to read them from beginning to the end psalm 104 verse 1 to the end verses 1 to the end psalms 104 verses 1 to the end these are a bit this is a bit lengthy but I, i will encourage us to just read through so we'll read it responsively i'll read one you read two praise the lord psalm 104 so uh please help us put it on the screen okay i think we should all follow the one on the screen even though I still uh, encourage you to have your own Bible. If you need a Bible, please see me after the service. Or you see any of the ushers and get a Bible for yourself. You need a Bible. It's not just the one on your phone. You need a hard copy Bible. You know, they're always updating Bible. I don't know what they're updating in Bible. Praise God. The word of God should be the same forever. So don't just stay with that one on your phone. You need a hard cover. So let's go. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, thou art very great thou art clothed with honor and majesty verse 2 everybody who layeth the, the beams of his chambers in the waters who maketh the clouds in chariots who walketh upon the wings of the wind verse 4 everybody Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Verse 6. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. Verse 8. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they may that they turn not again to cover the earth. Verse 10. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirsts. He watereth the eels from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He caused the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. Where the birds make their nests, as for the stock, the fair trees are a house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rock for the coin. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth is going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun arises, they gather themselves together, and they lay them down in their dead. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and white sea wherein are things creeping in innumerable both small and great beasts then go the ship. There is that ah some of us are tired can we take 26 again it's showing how many of us read the bible at home <laughs> this wait all upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou take a, takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and is trembling. He touches the hills and they smoke. Hmm. 
I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. We shall read verse 35 together. That's the last verse. Won't go. Won't to go. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. No, no, no. You did that because I asked you to do. If you have an understanding, so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, some people are still not getting what I'm saying. I want you to praise God. I want you to don't make God regret that he gave you your voice. You can still speak. You can still hear. You can still wave your hands. You can still stand on your feet. So with whatever thing you think, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people are catching the vibes. Permit him to use that word. You can still catch it. We are still in the mood of thanksgiving. With everything you have, with your understanding, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, as your pastor, I am giving you 6 over 10. You are not there yet. I want you to, with understanding, praise the Lord. Okay, it's already at 7.5 over 10. I want you to get to 10 because I'm also a teacher. So, praise the Lord. Okay, I think, I think, I think that is about 9.5. Let us add the remaining 0.5. So that everybody in this neighborhood, they can know that there are some people that are lovers of God in this place. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering in this place this morning. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has guided himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from old. From of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up. Oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. God is great. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures, Daniel chapter 2 from verse 20. Can you help us put it up quickly, please? Daniel chapter 2 verse 20. Daniel chapter 2 verse 20. The Bible says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are in the next verse. And he changed the times and seasons. He removed kings and set it up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understand. Verse 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Verse 23. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what, what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matters. Hallelujah. David had these understandings, and much more. That's why he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We read in those scriptures, God made the foundations of the earth. He created everything. God made everything. So, David has this understanding. 
That's why I will never agree. It's my personal thing. It's my personal choice. That, oh, a particular year is my year of this. No. The Bible recognizes times and seasons. That's what the scripture recognizes. No, the Bible did not say, in this year something. No. There is a season in the life of every, every Christian. Praise God. And the Lord will meet your need in every season of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, if you want God, a word from God for your year, you can speak to God by yourself. You don't necessarily have to go on Facebook or because one geo or because one pastor said, this is the year of, and you not tag it. No, if in this year there's victory for me, in the name of Jesus. I, I hope you will say your own. In this year, I am flourishing in this year. In this year, I am making it in this year. In this year, I'm moving to another level. In this year, I have abundance in this year. In the, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So your concept of who God is determines how you relate with him. Your concept of who God, how big. Be, be God, mighty God. Jesus Christ is the mighty God. He's not a mighty God. He is the mighty God. Praise God. So your concept of God determines how you relate with him. So David had that understanding and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. You remember when David came to, I think in 1 Samuel chapter 17, when David came after he had been anointed in chapter 16, and then he came, he, he, the, the father sent him to the war front to give food to the brothers. And then he came, he saw Goliath, and Goliath was threatening people. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has threatened you up to this moment, today marks their end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, somebody didn't hear that. I said, whatever has threatened you up to this time, today marks their end in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you now have an understanding of who your God is. You know how mighty your God is. Praise God. God is mighty. He's bigger than the biggest. He cannot be quantified. There's no one that can express God. Oh, Psalm 29. Can you let me put Psalm 29 on the screen, please? Psalm 29 was talking about the voice of God. That's why I always tell every Christian, whatever situation you are going through, just get God to speak. If you can pray to that point that God will speak on your situation, that's the final now. That's the final. Psalm 29, please. The Bible says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. The next verse. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory. Turn the right. The Lord is upon many waters. Verse 4. The voice of the Lord is what? Is what? is powerful the voice of the lord is full of majesty so god will speak over your life and somebody will say it's threatening you and somebody will say it does not like your face ha! Who, who is that person praise god who is that person that say oh somebody is saying he's a racist or something who is that person where the voice of god is over your life david had this understanding and he says the lord the Lord of hosts. The Lord that is great in battle. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So, if you are praying, this is what I do. There was something that happened to me recently. And anyone that is very close to me, would, would, I must have said this to the person or to some of them. Praise the Lord. I, something happened and I was asking God, God, what is this particular? What is going on? And he came. So it, it's your, your concept of this God determines what you get from him. You don't need me to see God. You don't need any pastor. You don't need anybody to see God. You should relate. When I hear people, some people say, oh, there's this particular church they used to go in nigeria so they are here now for example so because that church is not here they will not go to church you are worshiping that pastor and that church you don't know you have no relationship with christ that's what it means the lord is my shepherd a pastor is just an under shepherd just to guide 
in the word of the Lord, just to guide in the way of the Lord. That's why I keep saying, when you see me doing something that is not scriptural, call my attention to it. I'm a man like you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. These are some of the things that have taken power out of the church. Because some pastors have made themselves like gods. Nobody can talk to them. They are not accountable to anybody anymore. Praise God. So I pray that God will give us understanding this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will give me understanding this morning in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself that God will give you an understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that God will give you a glimpse into who he is. The interesting thing is that all of God is in Christ. Praise the Lord. Did you hear what I said? All of God is in Christ. John chapter 8 verse 58 please. Pray God help me to follow my notes in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm already out of my note already, as I have always done. I pray that God will keep me in my note this morning, for His will be done. John chapter 5, verse 58. John chapter 5, verse 58. Jesus was speaking, he says, Before Moses or before Abraham exists, he said, I am. Now, this particular word that Jesus used in this place was used by God Almighty when God was speaking to Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, I am that I am. Jesus used that same word. Now, the Greek meaning, the Greek word for that word, for those two words, is ego ehime. That's the Greek word, which simply means I exist. So, if you are here, you are still doubting who Jesus is. You better start having, stop believing some kind of religion that told you that Jesus is a prophet. Oh, Jesus is this. I always tell us, I see some Christians there, I give, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is this. You don't know who you are serving. That's why Jesus is God. Hallelujah. That was God coming in the form of flesh to restore us back into relationship with him. So he himself said it. He says, I am. I am. I am. Praise the Lord. I am. I am that is your shepherd. I am. He existed before any other thing. He is God himself. He is God himself. John chapter 10 verse 30. Jesus said, I and my father. We are what? We are one. We are one. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 describes Jesus as the exact express image of God. I'm just trying to help your understanding this morning to know who Christ is. So when you know who Christ is, it becomes easier for you to surrender totally to him, not partially. Not partially. It is partially when you think there are some of your problems that, no, I cannot take this one to God. God cannot solve this. You know, the Bible says a double-minded man cannot receive anything from God. So you're already thinking God can do it, God cannot do it. And you think you, God will not do it eventually. No, he will just be looking at you like this. Because you have magnified your problem more than God. That's what it means. Praise God. So, your concept of God determines how you relate with him. So, I want to encourage you this morning to pray to God to help your understanding about who this God is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wanted to praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. So, one other thing is very important anyways. How is your relationship with him? That's another thing that is very key and very interesting. You know, um, <laughs> there's these scriptures, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, I think verse 19. The Bible says, nonetheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth so sure. The Lord knows those who are in, and he has a seal over them. It says, let all those who name the name of the Lord, let them do what? Let them depart from iniquity. So somebody can claim to be a Christian. Jesus knows those who, what? Belongs to him. Praise the Lord. Because 
Somebody can say, the Lord is my shepherd. When the Lord does not even know that person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, if you are here this morning, your relationship with Christ is not okay. Or you are watching online, your relationship with Christ is not okay. You need to come into that place of relationship with him. Of the right relationship with him. Praise the Lord. And people say something every time. Oh, God, of course God loves everybody. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not die, but what? Live forever. Praise the Lord. So that is the love of God for everybody. That love starts getting better when you accept the first love that he gave to you. So I'm not the same with every man on the street. No, 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 no. I'm not the same with them. I can boldly say that the Lord is my shepherd. I can boldly say that. And I want to quickly talk about something uh, in the next 10 minutes as, we, uh, as I begin to round up this morning. Why must you surrender fully to Jesus as your shepherd? Why must you surrender yourself fully to Jesus as your shepherd? The first thing is this. He is one with God. I read that to us already in John chapter 10 verse 30. He is one with God. And he's the creator of everything. Of course, John chapter 1 from verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, right? And without him, in verse 3, nothing was created. Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the creator. God is the originator of everything. But that's not the topic. That's the topic for, for another time. Praise the Lord. So, he owns everything here on earth as well. Psalms 24. Can you help us put Psalm 24 up? I'm just trying to let you know why you must surrender to him fully. If you want things to be different this year than last year, if you truly want him to be everything to you, Psalm 24 verse 1, please. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world not daring. Everything be belongs to him. So whatsoever you think you will need, he has everything in his palms. He has everything in his control. He has everything. The second reason. He bought you with a precious price of his own life. He bought you. We can check John chapter 10 verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. Out of those three scriptures, I love uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 most. It says you've been bought with a precious price. Don't become slaves of men. If you want this year to be different, you must totally surrender yourself to the leading of Jesus Christ. Don't let that, your friend, control your life this year. Don't let another person control your life this year. Let Jesus be in charge of your life this year. Don't let some friends, they take you away from God. That's the best of them. That's what they do. They take you away from God. They, 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 sometimes <laughs> I used to have um, <laughs> a particular friend I'll just keep it that way <laughs> you know whenever I'm doing something in church and everything this person is always telling ah, are you the only one your own is too much because I'm serving God your own is too much are you the only one there is there another person there of course because this person wants my attention and maybe uh, I was not there at the time and all of that of course, if you are looking for me, of course, I'm not very far from the church or from the, from the face of God. Praise the Lord. So, don't... And another reason why you must not subject yourself to the control of man or men. See, let man fail. Let them fail you. Then you will see the greatness of God. Because man is what? They are limited. So, that man you are thinking, that, ah, without this man, without this woman, my life is messed up. No, without them, your life is the best. Without them. Without them, your life is the best. Someone is controlling you every now and then. You, you don't even have a mind of your own anymore. Let that change this year. Jesus gave you his life. He gave you his life. He has everything. Man is limited. There is a limit to what... And another, another thing with man is that every man is selfish. Every man is selfish. Even me, I'm selfish. Every man is selfish. So sometimes, 
their opinion sometimes in your life, if you are not careful, is for their own gains. Sometimes. Watch. Those people that really want you, they just want to subject you to them. They want you to be subjected to them. They want to take charge over your life. You need to watch it this year. If your life must be different this year. If something different must happen in your life this year. If you must move, like some people now that have prophecies, my year of next level. <laughs> if you must move to next level this year, you must surrender fully to the Lordship of Jesus Christ as your shepherd. Praise the Lord. Even a pastor, I, I wrote there in your, it's there in your in the in the booklet that you have in your hand. Even the pastor is an under shepherd. You remember that Jesus is the what? He's the chief shepherd. We were just smaller, smaller shepherd under him to guide in the way of the Lord. Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the one that can treat you, that can take care of you. Look, he wants to, he wants to take care of you. He wants to make your life meaningful. He wants, to, he wants you to live a life of purpose. The idea of the kingdom is that we are all Jesus in every area of our lives. Miracles should not be far from you. It should not be far from me. You should be able to lay your hands on the sick and they will receive healing. That's the idea of Christ. He says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. He said, in my name, these signs, Mark chapter 16, he says, this, this sign shall follow those that believe. He says, in my name, they will. He did not say, in my name, pastors will. No, he didn't say, in my name, pastors will do this or that. He said, those that, this sign shall follow those that what believe. Do you believe? Ah, some people don't believe yet. Do you believe? So, you can do miracles. Say to yourself, see, I can do miracles. Miracle. Lift up your right hand and pray and say, Father, anoint my right hand. Pray for yourself this morning. Pray for yourself this morning. Say, Father, I anoint that whatever I lay these hands on will experience a miracle. Pray for yourself this morning. Pray for yourself that whatsoever who told you you cannot succeed in your business? Who told you you cannot succeed in a foreign land? Pray that whatever you lay your right hand upon will succeed. Will experience a miracle. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Lastly this morning, I'll be concluding this message next week by the grace of God. Jesus is always interceding for you. Jesus is what? is always interceding for you. He's always interceding for you. Even when you think you are in your lowest or darkest moment, even when you think you have lost God, Jesus is always what? Interceding for you. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. You can check that. So, he's the one. He died for you. He did not just leave it a dying for you. He's what? He's interceding for you every now and then. That's why it will be hard for you to lose your salvation. It will be hard. Except if by yourself, you just want to totally reject him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to pray this prayer for yourself. The prayer is a very simple prayer. Everything that has been holding me against following Jesus only fully and truly Lord this year take those things out of my life pray for yourself in the name of Jesus go ahead and pray for yourself this morning 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 everything that has not allowed you you saw what we read from the very beginning how mighty God is the earth and its fullness is of the Lord. God owns everything. There is nothing that you need that God cannot provide. There is nothing. He owns everything. God owns everything. So, as a Christian, your life is settled with Him. But because most times, some of us don't even know what belongs to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want, I want to read the scriptures to us and then we are going to praise God because it's Thanksgiving. 
So I will encourage you to prepare your offering and your tithe. If you are giving your tithe, we are going to praise God together. I'm just going to quickly lead us in praise. We are going to thank God. And afterward, we'll invite people that want to testify. Praise the Lord. I want to look at these scriptures. Matthew chapter 7. I read from verse 7. The Bible says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or, look at this. Look at the way the heart of the Father is to us. And this is why you must stop following the opinions of men. Follow the opinions of God. Allow the all of God in your life this year. Look at this. He says, or oh, what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Praise the Lord. That is the heart of the father. Whatever we ask, but our concepts and our knowledge of God is always the limiting factor. Those, two, those things are the limiting factors that limit us from receiving from God. Praise God. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord. We just want to give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, Lord, for this privilege that we have to come to worship you, to come to hear this word again this morning, Lord. And Lord God Almighty, I pray that this word Almighty will bear fruit in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And if, you, if anybody is here that you know that your relationship with the Lord is struggling, all eyes closed, all eyes closed, I'm going to do this quickly. Or anybody watching online, you know your relationship with Christ is, you know, struggling. I want you to pray that the Lord will come upon your life afresh and help you in this year. That you want a better relationship with Christ this year in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you're here also, you have never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I would like you to also pray this prayer. If you want me to pray with you, you can raise up your hand. You have never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If, you want, if you're here, you want me to pray with you, I'm going to pray with you this morning. You have never surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. If anybody is watching online, I just pray this morning that God, you will help all these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that want to better their relationship with you, Father, please help them in the name of Jesus. Those that want to serve you and do better for the kingdom this year, Lord, help them and strengthen them.